keep crying. Uh, <coughs> this vlog is essentially just me convincing myself I don't have COVID. When you clicked on this video, did you think that you'd see me using the neti pot? Hey besties, it's Sarah. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm bringing to you a reading experiment. For the last week and a half, I have been vlogging myself reading booktubers' favorite books of 2021. I did this video concept last year, but I read the books off camera and then I sort of just did a sit down wrap up. And this year I decided I wanted to try my hand at vlogging. I bought a new camera and I'm really, really trying to get into vlogging. So I wanted to give you my thoughts on the fly, make them really genuine and just sort of vibe with it. I really hope that you enjoy this vlog i think i did a good job i this is the first vlog where i really feel like i poured my all into it and yeah so let's just get into the experiment i genuinely feel like crying right now it's a mixture of how powerful this story is how much i love it and how tired i am <laughs> so i've decided the first book i'm going to read is anna green gables because ariel's favorites video was actually the first one i saw i think she posted it before everyone else and it's a short little sweet read the audiobook is literally nine hours i don't know why i said that I'm gonna make some dinner and I'm gonna listen to it on audio. I've decided to listen to the script version. There is a version where Rachel McAdams narrates it on Audible, but I wasn't seeing the best reviews of her narration and I listened to a sample and love you and Mean Girls and The Notebook Girl, but maybe not for an audiobook narrator. So I'm just gonna listen to the random one that's on script and yeah, I'm gonna make some dinner and do that. So let's get into it. Okay, so I'm a little bit into Anne of Green Gables. I'm at the part where the guy shows up to the train station and he discovers that the little boy that they adopted from the orphanage is actually a girl. I think most people know the premise of Anne of Green Gables. Maybe I should rewind a little bit. The premise of Anne of Green Gables is that this family that owns a farm, I don't remember what year it takes place, but it's a long time ago. They decide to adopt a boy from an orphanage so that he can help them on the farm. And then they accidentally get a mix up and so then they get Anne instead. And so it's about her coming to live on the farm and like what ensues for that. I don't really know much beyond that. I never watched the show on Netflix and I don't think I've ever seen any of the movies or the cartoon or anything. So that is my brief knowledge of it. But right now we're at the part where they went to the train station to pick up the little boy and it ended up being Anne. And so far I really like it. I don't read a lot of classics and I'm always surprised when I do and I like the writing style and I think that it still feels like a book that I would read now. And so far it seems sweet and funny. In the very first scene they have like this nosy neighbor that notices that the guy, I think his name is Matthew, that owns the farm is like going off somewhere and so she's very nosy because he doesn't normally go out at that time. So she goes over to the house to ask the wife like what's going on, like what are they doing? And they basically, that's when they reveal her plan to adopt a boy, whatever. And the neighbor character was very funny because she she thought it was a terrible idea and she just kept telling like anecdotes about times that orphans like burned people's houses okay i'm a few more chapters in and for some reason i keep crying while i'm reading this book because i love Anne so much also by the way i discovered it's not a married couple matthew and marilla are brother and sister and they're just like a bachelor and like a spinster but Anne is just so charming and i love her and she told Marilla her life story and nobody wanted her. And now Marilla and Matthew are gonna adopt her. <laughs> I don't know why I'm crying. I literally am not even that far into this book. <laughs> also, this book is so sweet and funny. No more, no more seeing me cry. <laughs> okay, I gotta go. I'm gonna go keep reading. I might um, play a game on my Switch while I listen to the book. There are some games on the, um, like, uh, Nintendo like Play Store. I don't really know what it's called, but it's like the subscription that you do when you have a Switch where they give you all like the old Nintendo like arcade games and there is one that I like to play That's kind of mindless and so I usually will play it and then just like listen to an audiobook um, I also got this Switch for Christmas and I'm really excited. I've been playing it non-stop for the last couple of weeks I've been loving it. I think in the future. I actually might make switch content i didn't expect to announce that while i um uh, had a stuffy nose and was crying about anna green gables but yeah i have played a few games already i've been really into like downloading indie games from the eShop, and i think i might make content about my switch in the future but yeah i digress anna green gables is really good so far i'm gonna go listen to it and play my switch what do you think i 
guess she hadn't any father or mother of her own, but she wanted to be blessed too, so she just crept shyly up on the outside of the crowd, hoping nobody would notice her except him. I'm sure I know just how she felt. Her heart must have beat and her hands must have got cold. Okay, so it is 6.45 on Friday and I am almost done with Anne of Green Gables. I think I have about an hour left. But I also dilly-dallied the whole day and didn't really get a lot of my work done for my day job. I do have one of those, a 9 to 5. So I think I'm going to try to finish up Anne of Green Gables while I work on some designs. For those of you who don't know, I am a product designer. I work on an app that's specifically in the restaurant industry. I don't talk a lot about my job, but basically I just design apps. So I had the liberty to be able to like kind of do my design work and then also like watch something or listen to something. So I think... I might do that. So, it's been about a day since I last updated you. If you can hear from my voice, <coughs> I am feeling a little bit under the weather, like my throat is feeling really weird. I was really paranoid yesterday that I had COVID. I'm pretty sure I don't because this Uh, but yeah, so I wanted to just update you guys and say that I did finish Anne of Green Gables on Friday night and I absolutely loved it. Five stars will be continuing the series. It's just like so wholesome and obviously when I finish the series, I probably will watch the Netflix show. Like, I just loved it so much. I, if you have any recommendations that give you the feeling that Anne of Green Gables gave me, let me know down below. Also, I am so washed out in this clip right now. I literally look like Casper. The only benefit is that I feel like my dark under eyes don't look as bad in this lighting, but literally what is my camera doing? That is my one insecurity about doing more vlogs is that I probably will never wear makeup because I don't wear makeup unless I'm going somewhere or I'm filming like a sit down video. So more likely than not, I'm gonna look like this. So whenever you see me in little, little vlogs, but I guess it's better to have content and look ugly than no content at all, so yeah. I already started my next book, um, but I'm gonna go take a shower and get ready for the day. And then when I get back, I will talk to you about the next book. And I loved the humor in this. This book is so funny and joyful and silly. I just feel like it's a joyful book. A few things have happened since I last spoke to you. Number one being I took a shower. My hair is finally clean. I also used a um, exfoliating face wash. <laughs> That's like a tongue twister. I don't know if it was a good idea. My skin kind of feels like I did too much. I don't know, my skin's just really dry right now so I wanted to use my AHA face wash. I don't know, I don't know, it's fine. So the next book that I'm reading is the Thursday Murder Clip, but clip? I really can't talk. The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman. This was Meg from Meg with Books, favorite of 2021. And she's someone that I think is really into cozy mysteries. I personally have only really read um, like straight thrillers. I've never really delved into cozy mysteries too much. And I guess like maybe Veronica Speedwell is the closest I've ever gotten to a cozy mystery because those aren't really like thrillers. This is about a group of elderly people who live together at a retirement home and every Thursday they have a murder club where they try to solve cold cases for fun and along the way there is an actual murder of one of the employees that like is a builder for the retirement community um, and so they decide to that they want to solve it and so they get themselves embroiled with the police investigation and so I am I think like halfway through there's a lot of characters to keep track of and that's been really difficult for me. I don't know if maybe if I was physically reading this, if it would be easier, but I literally had to look up a character list because there's just so many names and things that get mentioned in passing. And even our main like elderly characters, like the people who like are actually in the club at first were hard for me to keep track of. I think I finally have them nailed down, but like all the edge characters, it's been difficult. So I've been struggling a little bit, um, but I like the vibes and I like the writing style. Meg mentioned that it was really funny and that's something that she liked about it, that these elderly characters are just really interesting and humorous. And I would agree with that. Like I really do like the humor in this. Um, and I do like the mystery because I feel like the mystery is not really straightforward. Like I'm still trying to figure out who did it as well. So as far as it being a whodunit, I definitely like it for that. But I would definitely say that my rating is probably sitting at like a three star right now, only because I'm not like, 
oh my god I have to finish this book like I'm just like kind of like oh this is pleasant this is sweet this is nice so we'll see how it ends for me because I'm definitely liking it more now than I was when I first started like when I first started I was like sorry Meg I don't know if I like this the cheek the nerve the gall the audacity and the gumption but now we're getting further in it and I, I'm, I'm vibing with it more I also think it's just me getting used to the cozy mystery genre like I just don't think that that's a genre that I'm reading a ton so yeah we'll see I'll keep you updated I read a little bit more of the book I ate my sushi for lunch and then I did my hair and I did a little bit of chores I washed the dishes and another murder happened in the book so I'm kind of getting into it I think I know who the murderer is though I like have been putting context clues together and like examining all the characters and I'm pretty sure I know who did everything so I'm curious to see if I'm right so I was not expecting another death so that did kind of pique my interest a little bit but anyway I will carry on doing some chores around the house and reading the books I might um, marinate some chicken for dinner later but yeah I'm gonna go try to finish the book as well as make my house clean okay one last thing a fun fact about me is that I am incredibly messy and a reason I don't vlog half the time is because my house is always kind of untidy and so I'm about to do some chores so I'll probably show you some b-roll so you might see how messy my house is and I just want you to not judge me I want you to just think of this as a very real place and if you're also a messy person you can probably relate to what you're seeing but if you're a clean person please don't judge me It's been a couple of days since I last updated you guys. I think I updated last on like, I want to say like Sunday and today is Tuesday. And I finally finished the Thursday Murder Club. I think my final rating for this book is gonna be like three and a half stars. I really liked the characters. Like the further I got in the book and I more, I understood the cast of characters and like who was in the Thursday Murder Club, the more I liked them. Meg pointed out in her video when she talked about this book that she really loved that the characters were elderly and I would have to agree with that. It, there's something about it. They're just so charming and they're very funny. And so I'm giving it three and a half stars because the mystery itself, it was a journey. Like I said, the cast of characters was huge. Like there were so many moving parts and so many things I needed to remember and that was really hard for me. And there was also a lot of red herrings in this book. It just kept topsy-turvying like who did the murder. <laughs> um, and I don't know if I loved that. Like I don't love books that do plot twist, plot twist, plot twist, plot twist. Like it kind of was getting to be a bit much, but I feel like that was supposed to go with the mystery like I feel like that was part of the writing style it is a series and I think I might read the next book just because I really did find the characters to be really charming um it does wrap up in a way where if you never wanted to read another Thursday murder club book you could like you could just like end it here I did go this morning to get a COVID test because I'm still pretty positive that this is allergies I've been taking Mucinex and a Zyrtec for like the post nasal drip um, but obviously in these times you need to be sure so I went to CVS this morning and I got a PCR test So we will know by the end of this vlog if I have COVID or not, but I'm pretty sure I don't But I guess we'll just move on to the next book. I'm gonna spend my night doing bullet journal things mostly I'm gonna film a lot of that process, but a lot of it's gonna be like b-roll filming So I might listen to an audiobook while I film that so but I'm gonna be using the camera I'm using right now So I might not have any updates for you until after that so you're hearing him like tell all of his jokes and also tell his story in a very authentic and relatable way. And I think overall what I loved about this book and what made it my favorite of the year is that I just related so hard to it. Will I ever look attractive in this vlog? The answer is no. Maybe in the intro and outro because I'm probably gonna film that, sit down. As you can tell, I'm not doing so hot. Um, but last night I started, what is the fucking book called? I don't even remember. Am I losing my mind? You Can't Be Serious by Cal Penn. This is Jenny from This Story Ain't Over's favorite book of 2021. Um, she actually, this was the only nonfiction on her list and it was really surprising. She actually mentioned, oh, I just kicked my tripod. She actually mentioned in her video that 
um, she was really surprised that a memoir would be her number one book. And so I haven't read a memoir since the last time I did this challenge last year. Um, Cind one of Cindy's favorite books was um, Know My Name or Know Your Know My Name by Chantel Miller. Basically the book about the survivor of the Brock Turner case. Uh, but I haven't read pretty much any nonfiction or any memoir since then. And so I was really interested to pick this up because Cal Penn is a famous actor. He was in House and he was also in Harold and Kumar Go to White Castle. I think that's the name of that movie. And then like Van Wilder and stuff. Like he's a famous like comedian. And he ended up working on Obama's administration really randomly. Um, and like leaving acting for a little bit and so it's kind of about his life growing up as like an Indian actor and then you know entering the political sphere and so yeah it's really interesting I have only like three hours and eight minutes left I think it was a nine hour audiobook to start with I listened to it last night while I was working on my bullet journal also I'm so sorry if this update is all over the place I literally don't know what I'm saying like I don't feel well <laughs> I'm probably probably gonna lay down after this and just like finish reading this um, but yeah it is really good. I really like his writing style. He narrates it and he like he's an actor so he's really good at narrating it. He kind of was breaking into acting when like racism was really prevalent and you know Indian actors weren't really getting a lot of work. It's just really interesting to read about how he had to take parts that were basically offensive and like stereotypical to Indian people in order for him to like prolong his career so he kind of just like talks about like the morality and the process of that um and I know that Jenny is actually also South Asian so I think she really liked this book because of the South Asian representation and so I really like it I like it a lot I also already kind of liked Cal Penn like I don't watch like a ton of his stuff but like as an actor and as a person I liked his vibe and so yeah I'm really enjoying it I think that I probably will give this about four stars only because it's really hard for memoirs to get like five stars for me because there's just something about them that doesn't hit the same way as fiction and I kind of reserve five star ratings for things that I'm like really like oh my god this is amazing I'm gonna reread this a million times oh I totally forgot I actually read um the Ocean Vuong book uh I on on earth we're briefly gorgeous or whatever I can't remember I'll put the like I'm literally having an aneurysm. I'll put the cover on the screen. And um, I read that last year. And what I liked about that memoir is number one, it was written beautifully. And number two, it was just so intimate. Like I felt like I learned so much about Ocean Wong's life. I like both the styles of these memoirs. Like Cal Penn's is more like step by step, here's what happened. And Ocean Wong's is more like, here's some random vignettes into my life, but you're gonna know way more intimate details about me and my emotions. And I almost wish that I could marry the two styles I know these are really weird memoirs to compare because they're completely different like Cal Penn's a famous actor and Ocean Vuong is like a poet. With Ocean Vuong I kind of wanted more linear like explanation of his life and understanding his trajectory but that's not really what the point of that memoir was because it's written in letters to his mom who speaks Vietnamese. I digress. And Cal Penn's is more just like oh here's my like step by step like what happened in my acting career and my political career but with Cal Penn I wish there was a little bit more intimate details like something about him is that he is gay and he kind of brushes over his sexuality a lot in this book I don't know if he's gonna get into it in the last three hours of the audiobook and that's really fine like I, I think he's so much more than his sexuality like literally his political and acting career is so interesting so it's totally enough content but I really would have liked to hear about that aspect of his life as well just a little bit more about like dating but anyway I feel like I'm rambling and I probably said um a million times and I stuttered a bunch so I'm gonna stop talking I'm probably gonna lay down I also ordered some sushi on DoorDash so I'll probably lay in my bed and eat sushi and listen to this audiobook also I decided last night when I was doing my bullet journal to not film it <laughs> it ended up just being really tedious and I'm not even done with it so I, I just was like I'm not filming this I'm just gonna make it and then maybe I'll film a flip through if you're interested in the flip through I've either posted it or I'm going to post it or let me know if you're interested I don't know TBD on my COVID results I don't think I have COVID but maybe I do I don't know you're probably watching this vlog being like Sarah's in some serious denial oh actually I bought a neti pot to clear my sinuses because it's all stuffed up here and I will take you through that process because I've never done a neti pot before probably gonna be a gross part of the vlog but that's fine let's go do it welcome to my bathroom please ignore any clutter you see this doesn't exist if you can see it in the frame I'm not sure um but yeah we're gonna do the neti pot well wait where did it go we're gonna do the neti pot I got so much fucking mucus in my throat and my nose <clears throat> let's do the instructions okay mm, no instructions oh instructions here okay okay go, pour it to the water fill line 
we pour one of these packets in. <clears throat> How do I open the packet? Oh, it's really easy to open actually. Now I really need you to ignore the clutter on my counter. I just, I need to clean this. Please don't judge me, please. I hope that I can just be a representative to all the normal girlies out there who don't keep their bathroom clean. I live alone. Well, I don't live alone. I have a roommate, but we have our own bathrooms. Ugh, anyway. <laughs> that was awful. Okay, I did it. I did it. I did it. I'm so sorry for this segment of my vlog. I'm so sorry. It's been a few days since I made an update and so much has happened. Number one, I 1,000% have COVID. Number two, I have sushi and I'm gonna eat it in my bed. Also, I eat sushi with my hands like a peasant. So, just leave it alone, let it happen. Number three, my dog's trying to eat my sushi. Number four, I finished, what is Cal Penn's book called? I keep forgetting, you can't be serious. I finished it and I liked it, it was good. I'm gonna give it four stars. He did eventually talk about his dating life. He's actually engaged to a man called Josh. We can forgive him for being named Josh. I think his name is Josh. If his name's not Josh, I apologize, but I do believe his name is Josh. So we can forgive him for that because he seems nice. And I've already moved on to my next book, which I think I will talk to you guys about after I finish eating. I probably should just eat my sushi and then update you guys later. Michael J. Sullivan, I'm going to petition the Lord to let him into heaven. If you are trying to jump into adult fantasy, this is the place to start. Okay, so it's been a few hours since we last spoke and I decided to dice in my hair. I just wanted to feel a little bit better about myself. You know, obviously I'm not feeling very well and I haven't been liking the way I'm looking. So I was like, let's just like get my hair right. And I love my Dyson Airwrap. I know it costs a million bajillion dollars and I'm so sorry for that, but it has honestly changed my life. Like when I use my Dyson, I don't know how to act. Like I feel like my hair looks so good. Do I know if I got the back of my head very good today? No, but the back of my head is none of my business. So, and you guys can't see it either. Let's talk about the next book that I have been reading, and that is Theft of Swords by Michael J. Sullivan. This was recommended by Monet from Life as Monet. She's actually a very recent channel that I found. I love the way that she talks about books. Like, she really makes you want to pick things up. I love her passion for, like, fantasy. When I was watching her 2021 favorites video, I feel like she just had this energy about her where, like, every single book that she described made me really want to read it, and this being her number one book, she just spoke so highly of it. She said it's a fantasy series that if you're trying to get into high fantasy, it would be great place to start and so when I heard the premise I was a little bit nervous because my least favorite kind of high fantasy is like kings and queens medieval style high fantasy if that makes any sense like I'm not really a game of thrones bitch I'm more of like a stranger dreamer by Lainey Taylor bitch when it comes to high fantasy and so I was a little bit nervous when I was like kind of hearing her say the description and so I thought I wasn't gonna enjoy this this is the first book in the Ryeria revelations I don't know how to say that Ryeria Ryria. I literally am listening to the audiobook and they've said the word so many times and I can't remember how to say it. Ry Ryria. I'm gonna stop trying. But essentially it's about these two thieves, Royce and Hadrian, and they're known as the Ryria. <laughs> That's like the name of their like business because essentially like nobles hire them to steal things and sometimes like carry out assassinations and they're known all throughout the land by this name that I can't pronounce and so when we start in the first book we are introduced to them as they are like actually in the middle of a heist and I love heists like I love thieves I love that trope in books like Ocean's Eleven one of my favorite movies like I just love stealing I don't know what that says about me. And then it kind of uh, progresses from there. Essentially, they get sort of embroiled in this crown conspiracy, meaning that like the king gets killed and they get framed for it when they're in the middle of one of their heists and they have to kidnap the prince and it, like all these hijinks ensue. I feel like I just did a really bad job explaining the plot, but essentially just know that there's a lot of political intrigue and there's a little bit of magic. So far in the book, there's not been a ton. There's been like one wizard and magic in this land is more of like a rumor, like it's in the legends. So a lot of people don't actually believe in magic anymore, but it does exist. And so yeah, I am halfway through. Technically, Theft of Swords is a bind up of the first two original books. So apparently Michael J. Sullivan released this series as a six book series originally and then they gained a lot of popularity so then they released them as three different bind ups and so I was going to stop with just the first book which is called The Crown Conspiracy but then I kind of just wanted to stay true to what Monet said she read which was the bind up Theft of Swords so I am reading the second one and so like I said I was a little bit nervous coming into this but it is just done so well 
I would say the only critique I would have is that 99% of the cast is men like there's like one princess in it But she's not really like a main character and so you know I would love there to be like more female leads, but other than that I love the characters Myron the monk I would die for him like I would literally actually die for him I will say probably what's contributing to my really really high opinion is that I am listening to the dramatized version of the audiobook So it's literally like a movie in your head like there are sounds in the background There are you know different actors like honestly, I'm gonna play you a clip Hadrian could see little in the darkness, but he could hear them. There were more than one, more than three, and they were closing in. Don't neither of you move. We've got arrows aimed at your backs and we'll drop you in your saddles if you try to run. The speaker was still in the dark eaves of the forest, just a vague movement among the naked branches. Hopefully you could see some of what I was saying from that clip. As you could tell, there was like a nighttime scene happening and there was someone in the distance kind of yelling towards the main characters. And yeah, like I said, it's just so lively and I love, love, love all the actors that play all the characters. Like I think they do an amazing job. And the book is also just really funny. Like I really love the main characters, Hadrian and Royce. I'm very much at the beginning of the second book. So I think I have about like seven and a half hours left of that. So I'm probably gonna listen to that the rest of today and then I'll update you guys. Okay, so I only have an hour and 38 minutes left of Avampartha, which is the second book in the Theft of Swords bind up. And this series so far, stunning. Like absolutely stunning. Like I love it. I love it so much. I love the characters. I feel like Michael J. Sullivan like perfectly weaves together like humor, fantasy, adventure. The characters are just like, I love them so much. This second book centers on a very different plot. Like it still kind of weaves in all the political intrigue that got introduced in the first book. Like the church has some stuff going on. The, like the different rulers of the different lands have stuff going on. But the main plot of this one is that Hadrian and Royce get approached by this young farmer's daughter and she asks them to please come to her small town because there's like this beast that's been terrorizing everyone and like killing all their families. And so there is a legend that there is a sword that can beat the beast, but it's like in this special tower. And there is a wizard that gets introduced in the first book that wants them to come. And so it kind of piques their interest and the farmer's daughter actually can't pay them that much. Like typically Hadrian and Royce do things for like large sums of money. And Hadrian's personality is so funny because he is very drawn to doing the right thing versus Royce is more about like the thievery and immorality of like being a thief. I just, I love this series. I love it so much. And I love the use of all the characters that Michael J. Sullivan introduced. Like even side characters come back in this book that like I didn't really think much about in the first one. And ugh, I don't know what else to say besides that it's so good. I actually ordered the box set of this series on Amazon because I'm loving it so much. And if you've been following me for any length of time, like if you're an OG that's been with me for a long time, you probably know that I don't really buy books very often. Like you're not gonna really see a lot of like book hauls on my channel. And as you can see from like filming, I don't really like sit in front of bookshelves. I mean, I used to sit in front of a bookshelf like back in the day. I think like 2019 when I still lived at my old apartment I sat in front of a bookshelf but I pretty much only own books that I've read that are my favorites like I don't buy new things if I haven't read them it's very rare that I would even pre-order something unless it's a series like if it's Cassandra Clare or like Libba Bray or something like that then I have pre-ordered in the past but I really don't own that many books like I would have to say I probably own about somewhere between like 30 to 50 books. And I'm only guessing upwards of 50 because I get a lot of unsolicited books from publishers. So some of those books are not even books that I bought for myself. But as far as like buying books, I do not do that. Like I pay for an Audible subscription and then I also have Scribd, but like I listen to most of my audiobooks that way and I use my library a lot. Like if I ever do want to physically read a book, I'll just check it out from the library because I hate, hate, hate spending money on books and then not liking them. And as many of you know, I'm really tough when it comes to rating books. So it kind of is saying a lot that I bought this box set when I haven't even read the other two bind ups yet. Like, I just know, I'm enchanted. Like I love these books so far. And I will say the covers of these books are absolutely horrifying in my opinion. Like I'm gonna put them on screen and you might look at them and be like, those really aren't very bad like covers. Like honestly for adult fantasy, they're probably on par with like what people normally do. But I just really, I think I got spoiled by like YA fantasy series where like the covers are just like really attractive. This series is really popular. So I'm hopeful that someday someone might make a better box set of these. But for now I bought the paperback box set from Amazon. And I also bought, let me go get it. Oh my god, 
I just tripped so bad over my ring light that my sock came off. I also bought this copy of Anne of Green Gables from the Puffin and Bloom collection. It's just so beautiful. I love it. I really wish they had done the whole series like this because I would literally buy every single book. I also think that this series is going to be a favorite. There's eight books in this series though, so I decided to hold myself back. I really am loving this video because I feel like I've found like two book series that I absolutely am going to love for like ever. And the other books that I've read have also been really good. They haven't been favorites, but they've still been like entertaining and good. So I'm having a great time doing this vlog. Like there hasn't been a single book that I'm rating like below like three and a half stars. One four star, one three and a half star, and then two five stars, like iconic. We love this. Thank you all so much for recommending these books. Do you ever spend way too long scrolling through TikTok and comparing yourself to other people and then call your boyfriend crying saying that you feel really ugly and then while you're on that phone call flip your hair over into a side part and catch a glimpse of yourself in the mirror and then be like, maybe I'm not that ugly. Is that too specific or is that relatable? No, but honestly, I think sometimes the overconsumption of social media makes me feel so bad about myself and then I just have to have a reset and like realize that I look like a normal person and I'm really not that ugly and it's a whole thing so hopefully that was a relatable bit but just random little musings I'm having that's how my day is going but anyway I finished Theft of Swords last night and absolutely loved it gonna give it five stars absolutely amazing and yeah let's move on into the next book this is just let me do my my wow That's how I feel about this book. So last night I also started The Spanish Love Deception because it was one of Kevin from Irish Reader's favorite books. His top favorite book was actually Starfish by Akemi Bowman Don. No, I got that wrong. Akemi Don Bowman. I was so ready to read it, but I could not find an audiobook for it at all. Like I don't think an audiobook for it exists. Like all of Akemi Don Bowman's bo other books, that's a long name to say, all of her other books are on audio, but this one isn't. And I had put a hold at my library to get a physical copy, but then obviously I have COVID. I think my library emailed me, I want to say on like Thursday that it was ready, but I obviously can't go to the library and pick it up because I'm sick and I'm trying to finish this vlog. So the Spanish Love Deception was his second most favorite book from last year, so I was like, all right, I'll read that. And it also was a book that I wanted to read anyway because it's been really hyped up on TikTok and on BookTube. And so, yeah, I am halfway through that. It is extremely long for a fantasy book. Like, the audiobook is like 14 hours. I also would have to say my review so far is it's really sitting at a three star for me because I absolutely, absolutely love all the tropes in it. I love fake dating, I love enemies to lovers, and I love there's only one bad trope. Like, all those amazing love them the writing is just a little difficult for me right now i'm sorry kevin if you're watching this i do like it i just don't love it so far if that makes sense i'm so sorry kevin because kevin was like he loves it and i love that for him and i love that for everyone that's loved this book it just has a few of my bookish pet peeves like i hate when romance books take a really long time to ramp up and i also hate when the main character is really in their head and they don't say things out loud and i hate the miscommunication trope which i feel like this book is like rampant with miscommunication so it's so obvious to me that the guy is trying to tell her that he likes her but she keeps being like no we're enemies we would never like each other i can't believe blah blah, blah. so in this book we have lena she is from spain and her sister is getting married and so she has to go back to spain she's been living in new york city for the last couple of years and her ex is actually the brother of the groom and so he is the best man and so she was really broken up over their relationship and she hasn't dated anyone in six years and so she lies to her family and tells them that she's going to be bringing her boyfriend and so her co-worker Aaron volunteers to be her date even though they have like kind of an office rivalry and they don't really like each other it's giving very much like the hating game by sally thorne and the way that they don't like each other at work lena just is a little bit frustrating because half the time people will ask her questions and then she just doesn't speak I don't know if that makes any sense, but like literally someone will be like, so what do you think about this? And she'll just be like, we are hearing her thoughts, but she's not speaking out loud to the person. Like there's literally this one part where she's on the phone with her mom and her mom keeps asking her about this like fictional boyfriend and she should just like answer her. And like, I could literally see the way the dialogue could go, like how she could lie better. Like she could just be like, oh yeah, he's a coworker, blah, blah, blah. But she just like, and her mom's like, Lena, are you still there? And I feel like the miscommunication is so willfully on purpose. Like she just is going out of her way to misunderstand him because she's afraid of the like chemistry between them. I'm gonna stop saying bad stuff and go read it and hopefully come back with better opinions. So sorry to anyone that loves that book. Hey Google, turn the light on. 
Okay, I am literally laying in bed right now listening to this book and I swear to God if Miss Girl mentions the color of this man's eyes one more time, I'm going to fucking scream. If I had a physical copy, I would literally annotate every time she mentions Aaron's eyes, his blue eyes, his intense blue eyes, his blue gaze, his blue orbs, his his eyes across the room, his his blue, blue, blue eyes, blue, blue eyes. I don't fucking care about his eyes. She just talks about him looking at her all the time. And like I said, she's being so willfully ignorant to his feelings towards her it is so obvious that this guy likes her every time she refers to their relationship as being fake or she starts to be like oh you're just doing that because this is fake he frowns and he seems upset but then anytime he tries to start expressing something to her she's like well, let's not talk about this i'm like girl uh, i feel so bad if kevin is watching this vlog i'm so sorry i know you love this book i know you love it i'm so sorry i'm just it's literally just it's eating away at me how many times she's mentioning his eyes hey google turn off the light the fact that I keep filming at night and I haven't moved really makes it seem like these clips are not on different days. I actually literally had to change my t-shirt because I was wearing another black t-shirt and I was like, I literally need them to know that I changed my clothes. So, so sorry for that. My books arrived, so I wanted to open these on camera. I know this has nothing to do with the Spanish love deception and we're on that book right now, but let's just back up a little bit because I mentioned that I uh, bought these. How the fuck do you open this box? That's not how you do that. You're doing a bad job. Oh. <laughs> um, do other booktubers unbox books in such a hellish way? I don't know. I got them. This is the one that I just read. Yeah, I don't really like people on the cover. But there are no other covers for these books. Like, no attractive covers. So, I was kind of like, I want to have these on my shelf. And I don't think the spines look too bad. So, when they're on the actual bookshelf, they won't look bad. Speaking of the Spanish love deception, though. Besties, I think I've been lying to you. This book is a one star for me and I feel so bad saying that because it's already hard enough when someone recommends a book to you and you read it and you don't end up liking it, you feel really bad. But when a booktuber posts their favorite books of the year, they're not asking for anyone to weigh in on it. So I feel like I am going out of my way to read these booktubers favorite books and for me to not like Kevin's book when he didn't ask me to read it, makes me feel bad. And I know he doesn't like own this book. Like this is a really popular book. Like it, everyone's talking about it on Book Talk. The Spanish Love Deception is not being gatekept by anyone. But I have three hours and 42 minutes left of this audiobook and it literally makes me wanna die. There is no reason for a romance book to be like fucking 400 pages. I'm so tempted to DNF, but I don't feel like I should do that in this video. I also wanna be able to rate it because I feel like I've already put so much energy into this and I don't wanna DNF too soon and then not be able to rate it. Does that make sense? I don't know. I'm sorry, Elena Armas. I don't like your book. And I'm very sorry to Kevin. Kevin is such a great booktuber. One eternity later. <coughs> so I've officially finished The Spanish Love Deception. I actually made a list of the things I wanna talk about, about what really brought this book down for me. I feel like I've already covered quite a bit of them but I'm just going to cover my bases and then just leave this book alone leave everyone who loves it alone probably put this on my worst of 2022 list we'll talk about it again next January I am begging not only Elena Armas but all romance authors to please look up how corporate jobs work I don't believe they've ever worked in corporate offices because the way that the characters speak to each other in public sometimes I'm like that literally would never happen at work it would never happen at work. I don't think she knows what an engineer is because all the characters in this book that like worked at the firm were, were like engineers, like Lena and Aaron both led different teams and the type of engineers that they were was never specified. Like at first I was like, okay, are they software engineers? But then like they weren't specific about apps or code. So then I was like, are they like construction engineers? Like environmental, like literally at no point did she say what kind of engineers they were. And throughout the whole book, Lena keeps talking about how poor she is. I work in tech and I work with software engineers and they make a lot of money. They make like well over six figures. And so I'm not really like super privy to other engineers. Um, I did go on a date with a guy once that was a, um, what kind of engineer was it? It was one of those, he was one of those construction engineers. I know that's literally not what they're called. I can't remember if I can look up the, what they're called to put it on the screen, but he was one of those engineers. And I remember he told me his salary was like 75 or 80, which also is not no money. Like that is a very, very 
healthy high salary and so I was just so confused why Lena kept talking about being poor because I was like if you're an engineer that leads a team at a con consulting firm that's really successful would you not have money I, I don't understand and then another thing which is such a random aside is there was a lot of random diet talk in this book like there's a plot point in the beginning where lena isn't eating like she should because she wants to be skinny for the wedding and so she ends up fainting and then throughout the book she talks about how much she loves sweets like she loves brownies she loves pastries she just loves candy like she loves everything sweet but every time she has one she talks about like how she shouldn't have it and i don't know i feel like that's something that's really prevalent in romance books where they always make the characters love dessert but then like make the characters shame themselves for liking dessert and it's really weird and i don't like it and i feel like there could be like a whole discourse about diet culture and books and we're not going to get into all of that let me look what else is on my list the dirty talk Ugh, so bad so bad he kept calling her baby not just when they were having sex but just like all the time like the minute they decided they liked each other he was like baby 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 this baby this blah, 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 got you baby i hate pet names like i hate them like my actual boyfriend not allowed to call me pet names he calls me babe like when he's joking around because he knows that i don't like it like i'm just not into that i don't mind like cute nicknames in a couple like if it's something special and particular to you as a couple but like things like baby honey sweetie they're just like they do not fly with me during the two sex scenes aaron just constantly does dirty talk and then lena just sits there and moans and it's so awkward he's just like yeah baby you want this cock blah, blah, blah. and then she's just like mm. <laughs> that's not what her mouth sounded like but you know what i mean i think that pretty much ends all my thoughts on this i honestly hope kevin clicked off like i hope he like saw that i wasn't enjoying the book and for his own like mental health like clicked off because like i know how it feels when you really love a book to see people saying they don't like it this in no way is any sort of like commentary on his favorite books like i haven't read all of his favorite books so i don't know maybe we just like different books i don't know i don't know i don't feel like we have a lot in common when it comes to reading i just love his channel go subscribe he is really funny and i love his reading vlogs he's great but this book I cannot. I cannot. Anyway, that's the end of my thoughts. I have one more book to read. I know this has been a long vlog so far, so hopefully you've stuck with me. I have one more book from a very great creator, and I'm going to move on to that tonight, and I probably won't check in with you again until the morning. So I need to interrupt this vlog footage to say that I actually am not going to be reading a sixth book. I know I just in the last clip said that we were about to go into the next book, but I am so sorry. The Spanish love deception just literally took the wind out of my sails. Like I cannot read another book. And I also decided that reading six books in a vlog is just kind of excessive. I don't really have a lot of experience vlogging and all my vlogs in the past have been kind of just like little short clips and so I kind of discovered that vlogging an entire six books at my reading pace is just a lot. I think in the future I'm probably going to stick to about three books per vlog. You guys can let me know down below what you prefer to see in a vlog. I know a lot of people don't mind when their favorite creators give them long videos and they essentially like like cinema length videos but uh, I don't know it just got away from me and the last book I was supposed to read was Anxious People by Frederick Bachman which was Katie Cole favorite book of last year. Maybe I'll get to that book later this year because I've never read him before and I wasn't sure if I was gonna like it and after the Spanish Love Deception I was like I don't know if I can put myself through another book that I might not like and so I, I just kind of had to cut the video short. I hope you still really enjoyed it. There's a lot of content here. I think this video is over 40 minutes long so yeah um, but let me know down below what you thought of this vlog. I really tried my best. I tried to put in like aesthetic clips. I tried just to show you what I was doing with my week and I did have COVID this entire vlog so but I really enjoyed doing this video. I feel like I found a few new favorites and I really enjoyed most of the books I read. We won't talk about the Spanish Love Deception. But yeah, thank you all so much for watching. You're all beautiful. Have a nice day.